guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Periodic. It's by Genius Games. It takes two to five players, about 45 minutes to an hour to play, and it's for ages 13 and up. And in Periodic, you're basically going to be scientists researching the periodic table of elements. You'll be combining elements, moving along the board or the elemental track to gather specific types of elements, whether they be helium or bromine or iron or calcium, putting them into specific categories and you're going to be doing that by selecting specific spaces and there's two different types of ways you'll be doing that whether you'll be pulling off energy or placing down energy to collect all of these specific areas on the board for specific types of elements this is a stem style game it's got some interesting little aspects to it it has a lot of uh, uh, things that you can learn about while moving across the periodic table and it is a full-on game Are you interested all right let's go ahead and take a look down below i'll show you what you get in the game have a play a little bit and then i'll give you my review of periodic the uh interesting compound game so here we have periodic and it's set up for five players and here is how you set it up you're going to be getting six six five and five of these specific groups you're going to shuffle them up and then put them face up so that when you remove one another one will be there each of these groups also has these tokens here, which are ability tokens that you gain when you gain these guys here. This is the board for the game. Place an energy space, an energy in each of these spaces here. You got the atomic number, the ionization energy, atomic radii, atomic mass, and atomic mass increasing and decreasing. This is your periodic table of elements here. And based on these cards here are going to determine the different elements you're going to be placing the specific colors on. So in this case, you have steel, which is carbon and iron. So you're going to have this green, which is also green, on iron and on carbon over here. The same is going to be said for Britanni metal, as well as solid state lasers and plant nutrients. You'll be placing down the colors. This is purple, so you're going to have these ones in purple here. And then you've got the pink ones and the blue ones here. After that, you're going to have these elemental groups here. Put them basically in a circle around the board. Four on this side and four on this side. And then place the first player on the bottom left. The next player will be uh, skipping one over. The next player will skip one over. And the next one will uh, skip one over. As well as the last player, if you're playing with five players, will be on the seventh uh, elemental table here. After you have done that, this is going to be the turn order for the game. Place all of your tokens here. These are This is basically your academic track, which is where you're going to score points throughout the game as you progress throughout these tables here. You're also going to place your little beakers on the lowest atomic number of your category. So in this case, green is going to be on the non-metals and he is going to be... Um, on carbon here because it's six which is the low which is the lowest of the atomic numbers then you're going to have pink and blue which are on the metal metalloids which are going to be on boron you've got orange which is on alkaline metals so it's going to be on lithium and then alkaline earth metals for purple which will be beryllium after you've placed all these guys here you've set up pretty much the entire board you're going to have these uh victory points and or science tokens set them aside so that players can easily reach them give every single player their cubes here along with depending on the player order how many how much science they're going to get or energy i should say energy uh the first player will get three energy the second will get four the third will get five and then you're gonna get three for the fourth player and four for the fifth player deal out two agendas to each player let them choose one these are going to be specific objectives at the end of the game that you're going to need to need to achieve in order to score additional victory points here and uh there's basically the one that everyone's gonna get which is one point for each level on the academic track as well as five points for having certain pairs of these cards obtaining them and or maybe something like points for every one of these specific goal cards you complete etc etc once everybody's got their little cubes here they've got their uh, agendas and they've got their their, their energy they're, they're basically ready to be in the game so the first thing that's going to happen is the uh, green player is going to get to go and the green player can do one of two things either a spend energy on these spaces here to move his beaker around the periodic table of elements or take the energy off of a specific space and then use that space one time so why would you want to spend uh, resources to move? Well, the first thing is when you spend the first time, it's only going to cost you one energy and you're going to be able to move based on these spaces here. This one will let you go left and right. This is going to let you go uh, the upper, upper right, bottom left, 
bottom right and upper left. And so if I wanted to, for instance, get over to uh, Phosphorus, I could place one on here and then I can move from one to five spaces going down and or to the right. Once I've stopped, I'm then going to be able to place down my color on a space that is uh, that's on one of these spaces here based on this color here. So this is a purple that is on Phosphorus. So I'm gonna go look for purple and I'm gonna place my cube on Phosphorus. The reason why I'm doing that is because if I can get all of these spaces Spaces, I'm going to obtain the specific plant nutrients card, which will give me eight points. Then, after I've placed once, I can go ahead and place again. It's going to cost two energy for every action after the first. So maybe I want to go up here, so I'd have to simply place two here, which would allow me to go up one space, end my turn there, and then I've got nitrogen there, so I can go ahead and take my green cube and place on nitrogen. One more, all I need over here is potassium. If I can get that one, that's going to score me the card. But unfortunately, I'm out of energy. Now it's the next player's turn, and on the next player's turn, they're going to take. So taking works like this. You'll, you get to take all the, uh, all the energy off of one specific space and add it to your pool. And then after you do that, you'll be able to use the space one time. So purple is over here. And purple, if you use the space here, you can only go up and to the left. So you might have to just end his turn. So that might not be the best play there because he can't move anywhere on this board. But if he wanted to, maybe he wanted to go uh, down and to, to the right. So this would actually be a better one. You get to take these two and then you can go one, two, three, and four. And then he's on Yttrium, which he's going to go ahead and take one of these guys here, look for pink and place it on the Y there. And that would end his turn. He can't place any more after he's taken. Whereas placing, you can place one, then two, then two, then two, and keep going until you're out of energy or you choose to stop. And then it'd be the next player's turn. And it's going to function like that going throughout the entire game. Uh, some other interesting aspects of the game is when you end with your beaker on one of these specific groups here, the element groups, if it is the next one in line in a clockwise order, so for instance, if green managed to get to halogens, which is over here, then at the end of his turn, if that's where he was at the end of his turn, he'd move this guy up and he can move his little uh, academic track token up one. These are worth victory points at the end of the game and they get worth more as the game progresses, as you get farther on the track. Basically, you're trying to make it go all the way around the board back to where you were to begin with to basically get to the very end here. The trick with this board, though, is that at 18, there's a max of three players who can be here. 23, there's a max of two. And at 28, there's a max of one. So, for instance, if you got these three guys here and one guy is here, he can't actually move up until these guys progress. So if one of these guys progresses like that, he can actually then go across the board and get to the end here. But only one person can be here. So that is an important aspect to the game, trying to end your turn on the next elemental groups, trying to push yourself along this academic track here. Also, don't forget placing on here energy is gonna let you go faster and further, but players are gonna eventually be taking these off and holding your energy hostage for use for their own nefarious needs. Uh, let's go ahead and look at these boards down here. Now, let's say that Green on his next turn managed to get over to this other purple potassium, right? He would then place this on here. And then when that happens at the end of his turn, he's going to take this and he's going to score it. So these will come back to him. He's gonna get his eight points by having this card next to him. And then he's also um, going to give anybody else points provided they have their own cube. So for instance, if this board looks something like this, and he managed to secure it. So he had, it looked like this, and then he ended up getting nitrogen. He would secure this card, which means he gets the eight points. And the other players are going to get three points and five points respectively for having one or having two of these cubes on that specific uh, card, plant nutrients. Uh, and this would go to the side. You get, simply give those other players these little science token, which are victory points at the end of the game. Not only would he get this specific card here, but he would also get one of these tokens here, and they give you special abilities. This is a free trend. This is moving uh, to a space. This is plus three spaces, and this is take two energy. On the back, they tell you what they do, what they allow you to do. And uh, that is how you're going to be scoring. After that, of course, moves off. This is going to refill it. You'll be taking these off of the board and then choosing new spaces here. So you're going for TI. You look on the board for TI. TI and place it on titanium, CO, placing it on cobalt, and then TA, which is 73, placing it on titanium, uh, 
Tent Tent Alum, which is what I like that. So now I get these three new spaces out. So players can now go to these spaces here. And that's basically the idea of the game. When one of these uh, decks runs out, that will be the last round of the game. And you're going to score points based on whether you completed your agenda, based on how far you are along this track, based on how many of these science tokens you have, and of course, based on the bottom right hand corner of each of these goal cards that you've acquired throughout the game. Whoever has the most points at the end is the best scientist at the uh, periodic table of elements. Very, very interesting. All right, let's come up and talk about it. So what do I think about the game Periodic? Well, this is a STEM game, but it's also a strong board game all on its own. You'll be utilizing the spaces on the bottom of this really cool board to move around your beaker to try and get on the spaces based on the specific goal cards that you need. And each of the goal cards will have specific uh, statements involving the specific types of elements like medical implants. as titanium, cobalt, and tantalum, which is something I never knew about. As well as, of course, on this little board here it gives you an idea it reminded me of one of my old uh, chemistry classes learning about all this stuff of course really really cool though really educational this is gonna be great for kids to learn how to understand the periodic table of elements how they function the different groups the uh, atomic numbers the symbols the chemical uh, name and of course the atomic mass of this uh, really really cool really really cool uh, there is a lot of uh, math and science type games that I've seen start to come out and a lot of them I do not like. Uh, they're just uh, they're just not fun as well as educational or they're not educational but they're just strictly fun. This one is nice because it's such a round a, 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 it has such a nice curve to both the fun and the learning in involvement. This game allows you to learn while simply having fun and playing the game. You don't feel forced into learning. It's not saying you need to learn this specific part of the periodic table in order to uh, gather how to play the game or it's not saying oh have fun and don't worry about what's on the table. These letters numbers mean nothing but it actually kind of gives you reason to want to learn more about the game as you're playing it it's simple enough to there's two options you're gonna have on your turn whether it is to take energy away or to place energy down and move around the board collecting as much as you can moving around on these elemental groups to achieve academic greatness it does fit the theme very well surprisingly and I mean surprisingly because with a lot of the science games, sometimes the theme doesn't shine through. Sometimes it just feels a little bland, a little like uninteresting. And when I'm looking at just simply a periodic table of elements to begin with on the game, ooh, it's nice and cool. Then I just simply think, oh, maybe it's not gonna have as much theme. Maybe it's just gonna be a learning game, in which case, eh, not, not really for me. But this one here is a little bit of learning as well as a nice, fully made board game. They took the time and effort to make this game fun and interesting. I wouldn't say it's on the heavier side or even maybe on the, this might be on the medium side, but the idea is fairly simple. Just moving around the table of elements, gathering what you need as far as elements are concerned, and then gathering the different groups and gathering the different goals. You have specific agendas that make the game different every single time. There's a good amount of replayability in this game. I can definitely see kids wanting to play this more and more. Now the artwork is just simply the periodic table of elements, so that's going to be for you or not for you, I don't know. But the meeples, they got these little cute microscope meeples, uh, which is really, really cool. And then it's got the little beaker meeples, which are very nice. All the components and all the quality of the components are really well done. They put time and effort to make sure that this game was going to look good and feel good while you were playing it. I just don't have a, a, a enough good things, enough good things to say about that. I do have, I have too many good things to say about this game because while we were playing it, I was just so, it, it subverted my expectations in a very good way. I was just like, wow, oh, that's cool too. And oh, that's very interesting. Or I like how they put that element of learning in this game where if you're not thinking about it, like one of the players I was playing with was just moving around and stuff. And I'm sitting there going, oh, that's how they, that's why they did that. And oh, these are actually highly toxic metals. How interesting, beryllium, arsenic, and mercury. And oh, I knew about arsenic and mercury, but I didn't know about beryllium. How interesting. I don't know. I really, really dig this game. I think for you guys that have kids out there that you like, want to teach them board games, you want to get them involved in a little bit of STEM, a little bit of science, a little bit of chemistry, you're going to like this game. You're going to want to take a look at this game because it's got a lot of fun in it. And you as a parent who maybe knows everything about the periodic table is still going to really enjoy this game with your friends, your family, especially your kids. Strongly urge get parents with younger teens to jump on board periodic and take a look by Genius Games. I liked it. I like it a lot.